Hey everyone, and welcome to Light Sirens Action. Today you have tuned in on a Medication Monday. Medication Monday is a quick little mini series that airs every single Monday where we highlight a different EMS drug that we administer out in the field. And we do this specifically in EMT drug card format. But as always, please abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. This is not meant to be a replacement for medical advice. Today's drug is called sodium bicarbonate, and you'll hear it commonly referred to in the EMS field as bicarb. The class it falls under is alkalinizing agents and antacids. How does it work in the body? Sodium bicarb is a very weak base, so it increases the blood and the urinary pH level, making them a little more alkalotic or basic, and this neutralizes the hydrogen ion concentrations. Your indications are going to be to correct acidosis in prolonged cardiac arrest, and this is after all other interventions have failed. What do we know about cardiac arrest? The person is not breathing and they're down for a long time. So we give sodium bicarb to kind of neutralize the acid that builds up in the body. Known pre-existing hyperkalemia, tricyclic antidepressant and phenobarbital overdoses, and it also may be used as an adjunct in other causes of metabolic acidosis. And this is, for example, like crush syndrome. As always, before we go into dosages, I just want to remind you to abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. The dose for cardiac arrest is one milliequivalent per kilogram, and this will be IV or IO, and this is for your initial dose. After that, it's going to be 0.5 milliequivalent per kilogram. Don't give more than 50 milliequivalents total every 10 minutes until the pulse is restored or as indicated by ABGs. But as you guys know, out in the field, we can't take arterial blood gas, so just go off what you know. In the other cases, like crush syndrome or the other indications that I listed, it is going to be one mil equivalent per kilogram IV, IO, and it will be a single dose. And just know, guys, the pediatric and adult dose are the same, so you're simply going off the weight of the patient. All right, your contraindications. Severe pulmonary edema, documented hypersensitivity, and patients with severe C. CHF. Your adverse reactions are going to be swelling of the feet and legs, obviously abnormal ABGs because we are putting a base into the body and it's messing with the pH level of the body, metabolic and respiratory alkalosis, your drug interactions. This inactivates most drugs, so do not give it through the same line. And also it causes calcium preparations to precipitate. You definitely 100% don't want to put sodium bicarb in the same line at the same time with any drug, but especially calcium. How it's supplied? It is typically in 50 mil equivalent in 50 ml vials, or a lot of times they're in pre-filled syringes. Okay, and just a side note on contraindications, something that I didn't really talk about with you guys. If you already know that this patient is alkalotic, whether it be suffering from metabolic alkalosis or respiratory alkalosis, which if you're out in the field, you're not going to know this, but if you do know this, just know that that is a contraindication and you don't want to administer sodium bicarb to these patients. Also, routine use of sodium bicarb in cardiac arrest patients is not recommended. So nothing beats good old-fashioned CPR, ventilations, defibrillations and other drug therapy. So if you've exhausted all these avenues and you've done all you can and you're still not getting pulses or ROSC back, sodium bicarb is a good last ditch effort. As for a routine drug in a cardiac arrest algorithm, it's it's not ideal. Also, sodium bicarbonate administration in patients with cardiac disease, it can be detrimental because it increases the sodium concentration within the body and it makes the intravascular volume increase and this puts stress and strain on the heart. So just be aware of that. Also, sodium bicarb can dangerously alter the pH level of the body. Alerting the the hospital to let them know that you've already done this and you've administered this drug is beneficial because then the hospital can know to prepare to take immediate ABGs. As always guys, remember to abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. This video is purely informational for those in the EMS field and never meant to be used in place of local protocol or formal education. We will talk to you guys next week. Bye!